uh, Anu, actually, both me and uh, Brock want to know who is the new contact and the new replacement for Shaolin. Say that. Can you discuss his email? Hi. Sure, I'm good. I can actually put his email in the in the uh, chat box, but um, I think you probably already do must have his email because whenever I send the agenda out, for whatever reason, um, uh, the mailing list or the mailing groups in Biocaddy does not work for UT Health addresses, so I always. Put all the UT Health folks independently. So, uh, if you look at the agenda that I send out, his address would be there. But let me send it to you anyway. So I can send you two people. One is Sirat, uh, and uh, we also have a new developer, Jing, and she has started kind of getting into the project. She's very new, but, you know, she's getting familiar with the project, and she will be working on the Biocaddy project. Okay, got it. So I'll send you both of their addresses. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No worries. Just let me know when Jeff is in and Sirat, if you could let me know if Kwa is going to join in today. I don't know. Yeah, he's in. He wasn't in. I hear Arjun. Who? No, no. Uh, he's not here. <laughs> Arjun is not here, no. <laughs> no? No, it's just his voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a recording. Multiple places at the same time. Hello? Yeah? Well, I said you're going to start a meeting. They'll be joining us a little bit late. Okay. Yuling, let me know when Jeff is in and then we can get started. Oh, no. I'm back already. Sorry. Oh, hi. Hi, Jeff. Hi. All right. So, um, then I guess we can get started. Um, so on the agenda today, as we had discussed last time, uh, we want to talk about the repository list where we don't have the data set or where we don't have the records um, that that are indexed, that are data sets. And uh, also, I have sent out the link um, and the list of um, data types that um, you link created. And we wanted to do the ontology review. I do not know if anybody took a look at it. But I think um, that's something that's important for us to do. So uh, we want to discuss that. and. I just have the NCE work put in there, but I don't know that we would have enough time to talk about that. But basically, it's not really much progress in terms of um, the NCE work yet. So we we actually, in the action items, we have the ongoing discussion with the leader and the common pilot folks. We don't have a meeting tomorrow, just an FYI to those of you that usually call in for that meeting. Um, then some of the other uh, action items from the last meeting were um, the fact that I was supposed to contact GVC and TCIA. Now, I, need, I actually do not have any contact information for that, so I probably need to go back and dig in in our um, list to see if we have anybody uh, that's listed as a contact for these repositories. So we can contact them. If not, I probably will have to uh, get in touch with Ian to see if he can put us in touch with 
the report, uh, since both of those are actually um, NCI-based repositories. And then uh, Ian also was supposed to follow up on NDAR. I don't think he's on the call today, so I will uh, follow up with him offline to see if he was able to get in touch with NDAR. Uh, and I've written to Alison, I haven't heard back yet, uh, about the wiper um, and contact at import for us to talk to them. So once those meetings are scheduled, I will, or once we need to schedule it, then I probably will get in touch with everybody. And I, uh, I haven't yet followed up with ICPSR and Fitbit. I think Alejandra and Philippe are supposed to follow up with IEDB. I shall follow up with them offline again uh, to uh, see where we are with that. Um, the other thing was that we talked about last time was to review that current batch exports by ICPSR. Jeff, uh, could you or Yuling do this? Uh, well, Yuling was on vacation last week, so. Uh, right, right. No, I'm saying, are you going that's, to that's on the That's on the to-do list for this week and next week. Okay. So. Uh, also, for the Jamia paper, um, the response to reviews is due this Friday. Uh, Jeff and Shaoling already sent me the responses. I've, I incorporated that along with everything and was taking a look at it. So once that's finalized, I'll submit it back uh, to Jamia. And I think that should be it because the response was only for one reviewer. Um, and then uh, the other thing is we talked about updating records uh, automatically for any repository which has already been ingested, so, you know, a periodical update. And this is something that um, we need to consider and we need to build into for data mesh, but we haven't done anything so far. So what we want to do is uh, for um, a small group to have a discussion, like, a, you know, just a, like a brainstorming session, this would be essentially include the developers like Burak and Sirat and um, Jing and uh, Stephanie will also be on the call and we plan to have the call next week. Uh, so once we've done this brainstorming session, then we plan to you know bring back the ideas to the larger group and see what how every what everybody else thinks of the plan. Uh, so I just sent out a meeting invite in case you haven't accepted it, guys. Uh, just an FYI. So, uh, Jeff, do you want, want me to make you a presenter? I think that might be for the report. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So the first thing is the the data set. The go to. Uh, uh, Conference controls are loading. GitHub? Yeah. Okay, okay. So this was uh, one of the discussions that we had started in the past where we really didn't uh, uh, sort of finalize um, how we want to handle this. So as an initial example, there's data from BioGrid. And let me actually load the BioGrid page as well. Um, oops, sorry. For a second, um, and so when you look at the the, the 
the actual data we're getting uh, from BioGrid, um, it's you know basically the an individual interaction. You know, so they have you know the the information on the you know the the, the genes, the, you know the symbols for the genes. Uh, you know, the synonyms for those interactions, um, you know, the organism, and basically um, that is a single interaction that's been curated from this or these paper, or from this paper, right? This, this PubMed ID right there. Um, and so the question, you know, that we've always sort of dealt with was what is a data set, right? And when one goes to BioGrid and one goes to downloads, right, they have, um, you know, their collection of uh, uh, data sets, right? Um, and so the question is, you know, how should we handle, you know, these types of data, right? Because it is a data item, but I don't know if I would consider this a data set, right? So this all is, right. a, would, 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 would all the items, you know, from a paper be a data set, right? So this is, this gets into what, so it, you know, there, there's sort of different levels, right? There's the, the actual large, uh, you know, data set that they have in multiple formats, right? And this is the collection, you know, of all the um, uh, uh, interactions, right, that they have. Um, and when you look at the actual um, information here, you know, there are a number of interactions extracted from a paper, so there are certain papers that have multiple interactions that, that have been extracted. So is that the data set? Um, but the problem is if that is the data set, there's no landing page for that data set, right? Because that's not how the data set is made available, right? The data set's made available by the large file. And so we can curate, for example, the large data set and say that there's this data set, you know, from BioGrid, you know, it, it, it contains interaction data, um, and then, you know, we list that mm -hmm. as thing. And so, th again, it, it, it's, it's, you know, how does this or how should this be represented? Um, you know, there's the same, you know, same question, for example, when one goes to uh, uh, metabolomics. the metabolomics, uh, the metabolomics data set, right, where there's a run on, uh, you know, where the so if I look at the current transformation transform data, you know, the, basically there's this uh, run that has, you know, all you know, the metabolites sort of uh, identify, but the question is, um, you know, is that individual run a data set? Or again, is the larger collection of, of data a data set? So um, if you are looking at the larger collection of data for biogrid, yeah. is that yeah. classified as one single data set for the whole of biogrid, or is it do they break it down into um, individual pieces? You know, I mean, they don't break it, so they don't break it down. So if you download this, uh, hold on, let me download this again. Uh, this one, this one. Questions. Will this? So basically, uh, it's a single 
file. I just killed text edit, sorry. Oh, there it is. Right, it's a single file. Uh, so let me load it in. Um, sorry. I can crash Excel now. It's going to take a little while to open an Excel. So and there, and I said there are a couple sort of of these uh, uh, examples, right? So another one is GTEx, you know, where they have a data set release, right? And it's a single DB gap accession, you know, but it has a number of different tissues, you know, with different samples, so. Um, you know, here they have the, you know, the tissue list, for example. Um, so again, the question is, how do we? I mean, you know, do we just do we just then default to the, the larger data set? And if that's the case, then we basically need to have a way to register that data set. But we actually have that capability now with, and this ties into the, the Cedar Commons pilot work, Commons credit, the Commons credits pilot, right? Yeah. So we use the Cedar form to fill out information about these data sets that are at this higher level, then we can adjust them that way. Um, but again, that's, I, I mean, you know. For, for it should be a group consensus as to with these data sets. So what would be the landing page for BioGrid? It would just take them to the download folder directly? Well, we could link to the actual release directly. So the, the distributions would, would link to here, and the landing page um, could be the downloads page, or it could be the home page for BioGrid. I mean, that that's something we would have to figure out. Hmm. Right. Again, it's the same thing for right for GTEx, Right. There's. Um, so if you go where they have the data sets there, you know the data sets tab. Yeah. Oh, so there's only one? Uh, yeah, this is the, of the V7 release. Yeah. But again, they're, 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 they're intrinsic um, subdivisions, right? Uh-huh. But so for GTEx, you know, there's uh, tissue, 
Um, you know, because they're donors, and they're you know the number of each donor has a number of samples. Right. So is it donor? Is it you know how how does this get sliced and diced, right? Um, and this is sort of a you know when we talk about deeper indexing, this you know it, it gets to the question of of where do we draw the boundary for a data set? Like for BioGrid, definitely if we go back to you know, I don't think an interact you know, like a single interaction like this is a data set, right? So, um, in the in the paper though, they must have deposited the the actual interaction information, right? Somewhere. So this is this is extracted from the paper by BioGrid. The so biogrid would be like a like a secondary. Well, they do the curation of the interactions, right? I see. It's almost like a gamma, or right where they're uh, adding. A well, gamma takes a data set and does a reanalysis. Here, they're extracting data from a paper. I think it's more like a knowledge base, is it? Yeah. Yeah, you might consider it a knowledge base, yeah. This is taking forever for this thing to... Hmm. But again, I mean, they're... You know, the, the, their data set is exactly what was in the, you know, in the sample data that we, you know, have in the, in the pipeline. Again, it's, you know, the, the interactors, it's a tax ID, taxonomic IDs for where the interaction was, you know, found. Um, so, again, it's... Microsoft Excel is crashing on me, but that's okay. Um, but again, it, it, it's, you know, they have the publication ID and I don't know. So if it's like a knowledge base, should we, should we actually do it? I'm trying to remember why we are looking at BioGrid and I wonder if we can. I mean, it is, it, is data, it is a data set. I mean, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, extracting that data from literature is, very valuable, but the the question is, how do we in BioCaddy represent that? So, how did we uh, handle scientific uh, data? You know, where we had the data coming from papers like PRJ and scientific data. I, I'm assuming. But those are those are that's a data set described in a paper. Right? So that's a full data. Set. So I, I say this is this is this this thing comes from a sentence within a paper or two sentences that someone has taken uh -oh. that and turned it into data, right? Oh, I see. But you know, they have details about the experimental system and stuff like that. But the yeah. actual data isn't available. This is the actual, I mean, again, the, yeah, I mean, it's, You know what I mean? Like the raw data or at least some kind of a, uh, the experimental data isn't available. Uh, well, it might be, but that isn't what was extracted from, I mean, this data was extracted from the literature, right? Hmm. Okay. I think this whole thing is like one data set. Yeah. See, it's like, you know, the association of DAB1 with APLP1 was confirmed in biochemical assays, right? So this whole, right, this whole paper describes, you know, this, piece of information. Mm. 
Mm. You know, so 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 this is an example of more of a knowledge base where we have to figure out how to handle that. And GTEx is more of an example of, you know, where you have a database of a lot of very granular records, you know, how we want to represent that. And MGI as well. You know, MGI, the issue there is, you know, currently, you know, MGI has, you know, lots of different information related to the mice, but what is considered a data set here, right? Um, sure. You know, you have gene associations, uh, you have, you know, uh, you have various alleles, you know, you have the genetic, you, you might have some information on, on you know, on ensembles and you're related to that, um, you know, information potentially on phenotype, right? And so is the mouse the data set in this case? And so this really gets to the modeling question. I mean, we could say, I mean, I mean, MGI then might be more similar than to the protein data bank, right? Yeah. But is the mouse a data set? Not really, right? But how do we represent that? So that's, I mean, you know, so these are sort of... Uh, so for MGI, could it be somehow similar to uh, what we have for GEO, where we have the series and nested within the series, we have samples and experimental data sets and you know there's there's kind of a hierarchical structure could we could we do something similar here uh potentially yeah i mean the question is what i mean there there isn't much of a higher hierarchy in mgi i don't think it's mainly you know this mouse because you could have, you could have the mouse train i guess and then you could have potentially all the other modifications like if you have um, let's say models different models within a specific strain if there are uh, alleles that are associated with the specific strain then you know you could have that I'm just trying to see if we can have I don't know if, if that's something that they would provide or is there some kind of a common thread that we could use to map it, like there's an MGI. I mean, it would be the. I mean, the common, the common, common denominator amongst those would be the would be the strain, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. Again, and then do 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 each of the different data are they individual data sets or I mean I don't think all of these should be you know are are individual data sets right but uh, if they have QTL data and other genomic style data are those then different data sets? Mm. But MGI is also like somehow uh, similar in like a knowledge base, right? In that sense. Yes, that yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because knowledge bases are. I mean, that is definitely the gray area, right? So I wonder. Um, So why, what do you think? Should we should we do knowledge bases at all? Well, all the mods are basically knowledge bases that have associated data, right? That is true. Um, 
and they want us to do the mod anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so then we have to figure out how exactly we're going to model in those knowledge base and uh, what exactly is uh, a data set. Yeah. 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 Hi, this is Nan Shu. And uh, hello? Yeah, hey. hi, Nan. Hi. Uh, actually, the, we processed those three repository, and uh, actually we have the same. Uh, in the beginning, we have the problem to understand the repository, which how can we um, understand which one is data set. So basically, what we did to MGI is we uh, we consider um, uh, they have multiple data data sets, uh, which means that. Um, we consider gene as one data set or function or or other uh, phenotypes so so which um, actually the the data sets varies in even inside the one repository so um, yeah actually it, it brings issue like when you're trying to ingest uh, this repository no exactly and so you know is the is the sort of the, the the go terms information does that qualify as a data set or is it really you know the genomic information you know for a strain or is it that the strain itself is the link <laughs> data sets come off that right so you say that you know this strain has you know QTL data you know this strain you know, also has, uh, uh, let's say, some uh, uh, sequences available. So, I mean, you know, the question is what is the, you know, how, <laughs> how does it get sliced and diced? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, I agree with you in terms of. Yeah, what and it has to be consistent across different knowledge bases. Because uh, MGI may be like a gene function, then how about this bio graph? How are we going to divide it to different data sets? Right, and if you look at some of the other knowledge bases, like Protein Data Bank, um, Unipro, things like that, right? They're, they sort of anchor around the entity being described right and so for something like MGI then you might say oh then it's the strain that we then attach yeah. data sets to but then when you get to biogrid what is the entity right yeah biogrid there is no you know is it so there's no it would have to be structure the within biogrid pardon me uh, is there any secondary structure within biogrid it's just like a, is it just flat well, well, yes. Yeah, interactions between entities taken from a PubMed paper that has information about, you know, the organism that that interaction is in, right? So that's basically it. So I mean, perhaps. We could say that there's a um, if there is a realizable entity that that is the, the publication place right? We, pardon me. It would be the publication, right, for Biograd. It could be, but there's no way to get just that information back. I don't think we could. It could be publication. So if we do, where's my biogrid? Might be. They have a gene so identifier search, but they don't have a. Or maybe identifier. So what, so what was the identifier? PMID. Uh, where did Excel died on me? Excel died on me. Where's the 
Sorry, just trying to find a... That. Let's see. Let's try the... The publication search. Hmm. Advanced, oh no, they have an advanced search, so. Publication searches. That's the one I was going to use, but where is. Publication tab from the main page. There is no public. Is there a publication? Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, so they do have a page for a publication that has all the information from that publication. So that could be the landing page then, right? I if, could, if it's yeah, that could be the landing page for BioGrid. Uh, yeah. See what the publication. Uh, they have an internal publication ID. Um, is that sixty-four? XPM ID, no. Huh? I just wondered if it works for you. So I wonder if for each of their rows, it's one single publication, or do they No, it's have one single interaction. So each row is a single interaction. Oh, it's in a this single file. interaction. Okay. Yeah. So it's an interactor A and an interactor B. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so for so for BioGrid then we can try the paper route, right? MGI, what were uh, Can we try the uh, train for MGI, or is that going to be? Yeah, so for, yeah, we can. Oops, where did my MGI thing go? Sorry. Wrong application. Um, yeah, we can try uh, the strain. So, Nansu, when you grab the data from MGI, are you... How did you did you pull it from one of their data dumps, or I don't have that. Directly. Yes, I think I think there, there's a link you can uh, you can download the data. Okay. Um, so if we if we reoriented this around strain, right, and attached like the gene data, the QTL data to a specific strain, would that be doable? Um, I don't know. I mean, if you can, if you can just take a quick look and then send an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would I can. Be That'd be yeah, helpful. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then I'll talk to Barack about the biogrid to see how we can potentially aggregate around publication. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since that's already sort of, uh, they're broken down, but they aren't grouped yet, so. Uh, can, you, can you send me an email uh, uh, for what you asked me to do? Like, uh, I cannot quite fully understand the question from the phone. 
Well, the, so because in MGI right now, there's a transform for each specific bit of information. Right. But like IMSR comp is probably not data. That's probably just information on comp, on where it is in comp or IMSR. Um, and so the, with, the, with the data that we're getting from MGI, is it possible to attach the actual data pieces, right, the actual data related to a strain? Attach that to a strain. Um, you wanted to uh, integrate the, the different data sets into one, right? Well, it's to collect Is all that what the you mean? Set around yeah around a strain to itself. I think yeah. it could it 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 is my possible because they they have the the ID, which can right. be connected. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. It might be possible that you can link different tables. Okay, and the question is what tables are important? Oh, probably, right. Probably not right. all, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that, that's, um, that's the question um, when we process the data. We, we get really confused because there's uh, so many different tables. data sets and we don't know which one is more important than which one. Well, some of the tables might not even be data, that's the thing, like go terms. Right, you know, right. Or just, descriptive terms, so they're not, I mean, well, yeah, so we, okay. And for GTEx, I guess, I don't know. Well, why don't we deal with, you know, move forward on BioGrid and MGI, and then, you know, we can bring back GTEx as well at some, you know. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think that's all I had, right? Okay. And yeah, and do we have any of the? Do we also want to talk about the ontology? We have a little bit of time. I don't know if anybody um, went in and reviewed. It's just a one time thing. Are you? Oh. I sent that link before, right? To BioPortal? That was Eden. That oh, was that for was Eden. E Components that were yeah. part of RAO, yeah, yeah. I looked a little bit um, at the different topics. And I, uh, to my mind, it seems like, you know, in addition to, I think you suggested that we w we could use laboratory techniques, right? Yeah, I, th I, mean, that, I mean, that was sort of what was, I think, more closely related to what we had initially done. So... I think there are multiple of them. Like if you scroll down, the omics topic is also probably quite useful. The omics, I'm sorry. I'm Because that's actually a little bit more fine grained, probably, and that's uh, typically what people search for. So, being able to annotate using that would be great. Right. So, the question with omics is because it's sort of then represented in both, right? 
Right. And what uh, we have... Not, necess- not necessarily all of them, though. So if you see, metabolomics is not in the laboratory techniques, I think. Yeah. And then uh, that that's more about the technology per se. If you I know exactly, if you yeah. Extend the um, genomics section. It's it's more about you know the the um, not the technique that's used. For example, it's in the in the lab laboratory techniques. It talks about chip seek, exome sequencing, stuff like that. Whereas here it's more more about is it transcriptomic. I mean, so transcriptomic is more kind of generalized, right? You could have or epigenomics, which could include chip speak, chip on chip. Uh, you know, there are different different methods which which would come under those. Yeah, yeah. So. I. Yeah, and if you look at the current, and also know, I thought the informatics um, branch was quite may, might apply quite a bit to some of the data sets that we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it, you know again, yeah. So it, it's you know. There, there's sort of a lot of ways to sort of slice and dice this, um, and you know, it really gets to. I, I mean, you know, was there any feedback from the users in terms of what they wanted to see in terms of the categorization, right? You know, because they definitely uh, don't see a tree that looks like this. You know, where they have so many different options and then they don't know where they're going, right? I don't think there was there was any specific feedback from users. I just think that if we annotate data sets uh, with these terminologies, then we would be able to search much better because that's the kind of um, questions that came up in the in the you know when we originally had the use cases workshop people were asking okay i want to see i don't know all all proteomic data or all rna seq data stuff like that and right now we do not have any way of answering such a question right just because we don't have the annotations So I know um, that you link pulled out the list of uh, data types, right? From what we have right now. Yeah. Were we able? Is there any way that we can map that to the ontology that? Yeah, we can. Uh, we can take a pass at that. But because again, that would tell us what would what's more represented, right? In data match currently, right. Well, but some of these, like some of the the laboratory techniques, are pro- they're probably not represented right now, right? But is that something that we should be doing? That may not. So, Jeff, I don't know if if we have been pulling those. That metadata, and I don't think it's represented as a data type, but it might be represented as something else, right? Right. As a different field. You know, these we can, yeah. So I mean, we can we can do the mapping and then have that next week. 
pretty straightforward since we've already pulled out that information. And I know that EDAM was one part of it. I think they, um, well, for IAO, they also used, I'm trying to go back to look. Yeah, so no, they also did. They pulled in from uh, Geo, right? Also. They pulled in Geo processes. Yeah. And material. So I don't know how useful those branches are. I think. So if we do the mapping to RAO, I think it would be good uh, in terms of at least for the first pass, we get an idea of what we have. Yeah, and that's basically cellular components, which... You know, wasn't sort of the... I mean, there was... I don't know why that... That isn't really around technique, that's about uh, component, I mean, sort of anatomical component. So that may not be uh, very useful for us, right? Well, but that's not that, I mean, that's not what, I mean, that's, I don't think the, related to the discussion of uh, what the data set, what the, data type is, right? So I don't think stuff in this branch, in the, in the cellular component branch, would be, uh, you know, would be um, a description of the data type, right? Right. So, so did we, do we need that? As a part of RAO is the question then. I, I, I mean, for data set description, no. I don't think so. Uh, where did I go? And then it also... So can you look at IAO, the ontology? Yep. Yeah, it's uh I haven't looked at that. Information that's really the type of, that's more description of, is it a document, is it a figure, right? Oh, okay. Right, is it a textual entity? So that's more the type of information. Uh, uh. It's a it's a description of the item itself, right? What type of artifact yeah. is? Which again, I don't think is what the data set data types. I don't think that is the data type we're talking about. I mean, we can add. I mean, you can always have you know, an IAO tag as well, but most of it is going to be probably then, you know, a data set. IAO 100, which is a data set, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. All right. Time is almost up. Yep. I can, uh, so maybe um, since Alejandra and Philippe are not on the call, we can get back to them about this part. Please.
and when we do the mapping, we can talk to them a little bit more, I think. Right. So was there anything else that we wanted to discuss? No. If not, I think uh, we can finish three minutes early today. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.